this right here that is an event. This is where we set up our art for the most part. And then game events is where we set up our programming as well as our logic to actually make things work in this game engine. Okay, and G developed the way things work. Basically, our scenes, which you saw we added a, a scene, which is over here. And then it works by using events as well as actions to set up the logic and programming for your game. So right here we see the sign that says there are no events here. Event, events are composed of conditions and actions. Add your first event using the first buttons of the toolbar. So what we want to do is click this button right here. When we click that, now we have our condition as well as... Uh, a way for us to set up an action. So with this setup, we are ready to begin working the setup to get our, our animation working. Okay, one of the very cool things in GDevelop, I'm gonna click back here to go back to uh, our artwork here. As an, as an artist, uh, typically when I come into a game engine, I wanna see my work move. I want to see my artwork move. And uh, one of the things when I first tried GDevelop that really made me like this was how easily you could set up movement. You can program movement yourself like you would in other game engines, but GDevelop also has it set up where you can set up your movement, I mean, as far as your controls, almost immediately. So right now, if I go to my arrow keys, nothing oh, actually it does work a little. And that's just uh, the... Uh, by pushing the arrow keys, you can make fine adjustments to your artwork. However, what we can do for uh, movement for this is we can double click on our sprite. Oh, I named this idle. Let's see, this player here, this animation zero is supposed to be named idle. Okay, when you look to the top of here, you see where we see properties. You wanna click on behaviors. Once you click on behaviors, you'll see this plus button to the right. When you click that plus button, you'll see all of these different behaviors. What you wanna do is scroll down if you want. You could also see it without scrolling, but this top down movement for eight directions, you're gonna left click here. When you did that, you have these different options set up where you can adjust your top down movement. I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna take away this check mark next to rotate object. And then I'm gonna click apply. So just with that now, when I look up to these options up here, when I, this right here is uh, our preview button, and this lets us preview the scene. This is also lets us play our game. So I'm gonna click this now. And when I click this, we can see our sprite right here. Now when I use my arrow control keys, you can see that I have control over this sprite. So uh, I just really like that, how easy and quick it is just to at least get your artwork moving. Uh, so our I said at the beginning of the tutorial, this tutorial is to help you set up isometric movement as well as isometric animation. Well, guess what? Your isometric movement is already set up just like that by using the behavior. Now what we need to do is set up our isometric animation. Okay, to set up our programming, we're going to click on Game 1 Events. And then here in this Game 1 Events, we see our add condition and our add action. The way you want to think of add condition is add condition tells GDevelop when something happens and then add action says when that something happens, this is what you want GDevelop to do. So this is when and then this is what in a sense. So what we want to do is click on add condition. We're going to scroll down through all these options till we see top-down movement. We're going to left-click on top-down movement. We're going to look for is moving. So we're going to left-click there. GDevelop wants us to know what it wants us to, wants, what we want it to focus its attention on. We're going to select player. And then with that done, I just left-click here to get that menu to go away. I'm going to left-click on OK. OK, so our main thing is the player is, uh, we're saying, look, when the player is moving, we want something to happen. In GDevelop, we have conditions and events. So this is an event, and then we add conditions to the event. We can also add sub-events to an event. So we want to add a sub-event to this. Now, it's important where you click NG Develop 
So to get this something, if I if I click on this gray panel here where it says players moving, if I left click here, if you look over here, see this button is actually our sub event button. See how it's grayed out? It's grayed out so GDevelop is telling me that you can't select this right now. So what I need to do is actually move my mouse down some and then left click underneath that gray bar but still in this box that represents our condition. So now when I did that, now our sub event is now selectable. So I'm going to left click there to uh, have our sub event appear. So with the, this sub events, this is this is actually where we're going to set up our animation angles. So remember, we have eight different angles. So we're going to need eight different sub events. So we have this first one here. So we need to click this button seven more times. Now I'm still GDevelop still remembers that I clicked right here. So it's basically I, I just click right here now. So I'm going to click this another seven times. So this is going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now that we have these different sub events set up, we are ready to go through with our different angles. So remember, I told you this is when something happens and this is what you want to happen. So for this add condition, we're going to left click right on that add condition. And what we're going to do is scroll down till we see It, but there we go keyboard and then we want to go to key pressed so this is our first animation and this is going to be left so i'm going to hold shift and then i'm just typing in left now that there was a list that popped up i could have scrolled through that list and i could have found the button and just selected left just telling you that so you know that that you can do that this is faster so i just typed in left so i'm going to click ok so basically now you see this says left key is pressed. So this is the when, when left key is pressed. And now this is, okay, what do you want to happen? This is the add action. So I'm going to left click on add action. So what we want to happen is for the matching sprite that goes along with left key to, you know, be selected and play that animation. So I'm going to click sprite and then animations and images. And then I'm going to go to change the animation. And then GDevelop wants to know what we wanted to focus on, which is our player. I'm going to left click here to get this menu to go away. I'm going to go to this modification, modification sign, set this to equal set to. And the value needs to be one. And this one matches up when we set up our sprites in, uh, when we first set up our sprites, we went through one through eight. And I told you GDevelop knew uh, which animation number match which direction. So this one matches up with left. So I'm going to click OK. So now that we have our when set up and our what, and even our, these, these basic conditions and this action, what we can do is we can copy and paste what we have done here just to make our work quicker. You, you can, there's multiple ways you can do things in GDeveloped. I'm trying to show you uh, a way to just get through this, hopefully in a fairly quick manner. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just copy and paste this left key is pressed to these other conditions because we can easily change which key this this uh, is saying is being pressed. So I'm going to hover right here. I'm going to right click, select copy. And one thing that's important to note, see how there's these blue lines. Each of these blue lines lets us see which sub events we're on. See how we have this A condition right underneath this left key is pressed? it's important that you know where you're pressing. So if right now I want all separate uh, sub events. So to do that, I'm gonna be careful that I don't click on this add condition directly underneath this gray bar and directly to the side of this blue bar right here. I'm gonna to go to this next blue bar and then I'm gonna right click paste. And I'm just gonna do this for the rest of these uh, sub events. So I'm just right clicking and pasting And I did this because now we have this key set up to be pressed and we can just easily change this to what we need it to be. 
Okay, and so just like we did for this side, we're gonna do the same thing now for this side. So I'm gonna right click, select copy, and then I'm just gonna to go to action. I'm gonna be careful that I don't select the action right underneath here, because that's not what I wanna do, at least for right now. I'm gonna to go to this next action, which is to the, uh, the right of this blue bar. This is a separate sub event. So I'm just gonna paste. Okay, and now this is also easy for us to, to set up and change. And uh, again, there's multiple ways to do this. This is just my current way of doing this, hopefully just to have you be able to get your animation set up in a, a shorter, fairly short amount of time. Okay, so for these animations, for these actions, we need to change this number here. So we know this is going through one through eight. So what we can do is I can go to GDevelop and I can double click on this action, come into this action, and I can see here, you know, the different things that I previously chose and I can change this. I can also change the value here. I'm gonna click cancel. And then what I'm gonna do is instead of that, I'm gonna click, just click right on number. And then this allows me to quickly just change this to two. And then I can quickly go to the rest of these numbers and change them to what they need to be. So I'm just changing them. So we're going through our different angles. Whoops. Okay, so now just by